Welcome to the video demonstration of the pediatric long case on nephrotic syndrome. And in your long case, you get about 40 minutes to be with the patient to gather history and perform physical examination and then formulate a summary and a problem list. And after that, you will get about 20 minutes time with two examiners to present your findings and to discuss the patient. Let's watch the demonstration. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm one of your examiners. This is your pediatrics long case. Uh, we have about 20 minutes time for this exam and you are expected to present history, physical examination, followed by a summary and a list of problems. And then for the rest of the 20 minutes, we'll get an opportunity to discuss your patient. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. You can present now. Yes. Master Shenul, a 10-year-old boy from Jaila, the second born child of non consanguineous healthy parents and the history was taken from the mother who was educated up to all levels and is a housewife. The child was presented with fever, cough, shortness of breath for four days of duration, periorbital edema for one day duration and prothiurine for one day duration. Master Shenol is a diagnosed patient with nephrotic syndrome since 2019 and the last episode was 10 months ago. This time he was admitted with a sudden onset periorbital edema which was noticed by his mother. Changes in the heat test was also noticed as plus 1 for 2 days, 2 plus for 1 day and increased up to 3 plus for 1 day with development of the edema. Then at this point she has sought medical attention and started on prednisolone. Before the onset of edema and the changes of the heat test, child has had a mild upper respiratory uh, symptoms with fever. But during this episode, mother has not noticed red colored urine or not known to have high blood pressure, no headache or visual blurring. There are no previous episodes of urinary tract infection, fatigue or itching which is suggestive of uremic symptoms. No history of cardiac disease, nocturnal cough, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea or exercise intolerance as well. No yellowish discoloration of skin and sclera and doesn't complain of blood vomiting or passing of dark stools. Bubble habits was normal and there's no known allergies. He was maintaining his urine output normally and there's no history of headache, seizures, abdominal pain with fever. During the course of this illness, no skin rashes or joint swelling or pain has occurred and there is no excessive hair loss noted by the mother. In past medical history, this child was diagnosed to have nephrotic syndrome 4 years back and he was apparently well before that. So at 6 years and 9 months, he developed the first episode of nephrotic syndrome with generalized body swelling for two weeks of duration. Urine protein was checked at that time two weeks after the symptoms and it was positive. So she was investigated and diagnosed to have nephrotic syndrome and after seeking medical attention she was admitted to the hospital and treated with oral prednisolone where baby responded within 10 days. Again, the baby developed the first relapse of nephrotic syndrome at 7 years and 6 months of age while the baby was off prednisolone for 4 months of duration where he was again started on oral prednisolone. Then the second relapse developed at the age of 8 years and 2 months with same symptoms which was, uh, which was uh, again treated with same management and all these relapses responded early to the daily dose of prednisolone. Patient does not complain of side effects of the drugs except for the increased weight gain after treating with prednisolone. Child was noted to have high serum cholesterol as well but he is not on treatments. Mother was known whether the baby uh, underwent special blood investigations, renal biopsy was not done. There is no previous medical or surgical illnesses other than nephrotic syndrome which needed hospital admissions. Medication used, medications used were the pred, oral prednisolone, calcium and vitamin D. There is no known allergies to food, drug or plaster. In birth history, 
He is the second born child of the family who is born by a normal vaginal delivery at term with an uncomplicated antenatal period. Birth was uneventful and birth weight was 3.250 grams. Growth and development was age appropriate, has a good social interaction at school and, the, and he studies in grade 5 and performs school work in an average manner. He was vaccinated age appropriately according to the EPI schedule until fifth dose of diphtheria and tetanus at five years of age. There were no adverse effects following immunization which was noticed. But no non-EPI vaccines were given like pneumococcal and varicella vaccines. In family history, he was born to an unconsanguineous parent where mother is 36 years and father is 40 years old. His elder sister is 14 years old and healthy. But there is a positive family history of chronic kidney disease where the cause is not evaluated. He was exclusively breastfed until 6 months and started complementary feeding uh, at that point. And now currently he is taking 3 main meals and 2 snacks. The main meals usually consist of 1 cup of rice, 2 vegetables, fish, meat or egg as the protein component which is given 2 times a week. Mother was ad advised not to add salts and give a normal salt diet and also to give a low oil and low sugar diet. Mother is a housewife. Father works as a driver at the private sector. Elder sister is also schooling. Maternal grandparents also live with them at their house and they have extended family support. Monthly income of their family is around 45,000 per month and they can barely manage their expenses but they have financial issues as well. The nearest hospital is Gampaha Hospital but they used to come to the North Kalamu Teaching Hospital Ragam. Both mother and the child are aware of the disease but they do not aware of the side effects of the medications and when to seek the medical attention but they are barely compliant on the treatments. They do not know how to perform the urine protein test with heat test uh, in a proper way. He is cooling and performing in an average manner and he is playing carom. He is missing school during the hospital stay and the clinic days. But, they, but he get the help from the, her, his friends. He has a good attitude, to, attitude uh, towards the medication and they expect they, they expect to get rid of the disease as soon as possible. Mother stays with the child during the inward treatment and hospital stay and during that period of time they face difficulties in taking care of her parents and the elder sister. Daughter is also taking care of her brother and there is no sibling rival or any other problems. On examination, uh, the weight is 40.9 kilograms which is more than the 97th centile. Height is 140.5 centimeters which is in between the 50th and the 90th centile which is normal. Body mass index is 20.4 kilograms per square meter which is uh, in between plus 1 to plus 2 SD and he is overweight. Body surface area was 1.3 square meters. In general examination he was well looking no dysmorphic features, well grown and comfortably lying on bed. He was afebrile, there is uh, periorbital edema but no, not pale or icteric. There is no stigmata of cushionoid, uh, cushion syndrome and the throat examination was normal. Hydration was normal and good and there were mild ankle edema. In cardiovascular system, the child had bone peripheries, capillary refilling time was less than 2 seconds, pulse rate was 80 beats per minute with good volume. Jugular venous pressure was not elevated. Blood pressure was 114 by 73 millimeters of mercury. Uh, apex was not deviated. Heart sounds were normal and there were no murmurs. In abdominal examination, it was not distended, there were no surgical scars and it was non-tender, no renal angle tenderness as well. There were no hepatomegaly, splenomegaly or no palpable bladder. There were no palatable masses as well. 
and the external genitalia appeared normal. Respiratory system examination revealed a normal examination without having a respiratory distress. The respiratory rate was 16 per minute with a saturation of 98% and their entry uh, was equal in both lobes. Central nervous system examination appeared normal and she was active and alert uh, with normal examination findings. Can you summarize the patient now? Yes, sir. in summary, this is a 10 year old boy who was diagnosed to have steroid sensitive nephrotic syndrome for four years, presented with his third relapse of with periorbital edema and changes in the protein test with the preceding lower respiratory tract infection symptoms while off prednisolone. All previous episodes were responding to prednisolone and remission was achieved within 10 days of starting of the treatments. On examination he was overweight and there were periorbital edema and mild bilateral ankle edema. He was hemodynamically stable. Can you present your problem list? Yes, sir. there are acute medical problems long-term medical problems and social problems. In acute medical problems, he has admitted with the third relapse of steroid sensitive nephrotic syndrome. And also there are long-term medical problems such as overweight. And there's a family history of chronic kidney disease which where the cause is not evaluated. And he is not vaccinated for pneumococcal or varicella vaccine. In social problems, they have a poor education regarding the home management and there are several financial issues and issues in managing the uh, grandmother and the daughter as well during the hospital stay. What investigations will you perform on this child? Yes, sir. Initially, I will send a urine sample to the lab to perform the urine full report and urine culture. And also, I would like to take a spot sample to perform the urine protein creatinine ratio as well. Then I will proceed with the blood investigations including full blood count and CRP to check for evidence of infection. Then uh, serum creatinine, serum electrolytes for the renal function and the volume status. Then after that serum albumin to detect hypoalbuminemia and serum cholesterol as well. How would you treat this child? Once the patient is admitted to the hospital, I will give him acute side bed. Then I will assess the hemodynamic stability and all the vital parameters of the baby. Then I have to detect that the baby is having a relapse of the nephrotic syndrome and start him on oral prednisolone, 60 mg per square meter dose, daily dose. Then I have to monitor the patient along with the daily weight chart, urine output and input charts. And also I have to look for the side effects of the drugs as well. Then I will uh, perform the daily uh, urine award test to detect protein urea. And also I want to educate the mother regarding each and every step in our management and check whether there is any good idea regarding this management procedure. If this child presents with abdominal pain on presentation, what are the possible causes for that? Yes, in case of abdominal pain in this child who is having nephrotic syndrome, I will look for any evidence of urinary tract infection, uh, gastritis which was induced by the steroid intake and any infections like spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. And also I would like to look for hypovolemia which has caused uh, ischemia in the bowel. And also there can be appendicitis which can give rise to the abdominal pain as well. Right, with your treatment, the patient now going into remission. How would you recognize remission? Yes, remission is when we doing when we are performing a urine ward test. If the protein is nil, either nil or trace in a urine ward test, and which is having for consecutive three days. You are going to plan the discharging of this patient. How would you plan the discharge? Yes. Initially, I want to assess the patient and assess for the symptom control. Then I will optimize the medications and I will educate the mother regarding medications and how to use them. Then I want to assess the compliance and the education level regarding this disease. If it is not satisfactory, I want to educate the mother 
regarding the disease cause, what can be happen in the future and how to identify a relapse or, uh, and also if there is an intercurrent illness, how to detect and when to seek the medical attention. Spe specifically, since the child and the family was having a problem regarding performing the heat test, I want to specifically address on this matter. Following discharge, if this child presents with an intercurrent infection, what would be your action plan? Then I want to detect that the patient is having an intercurrent infection and it can cause a relapse in the nephrotic syndrome. So I want to actively manage the infection. I want to find out the cause for the infection and get actions on starting antibiotics on this matter. Then I would uh, check whether the baby's, uh, baby needs oral or IV antibiotics and start on the antibiotic regimes. The mother reports to you sometime later once the child is discharged that the child is now having transient proteinuria. What is your action plan for transient proteinuria? Yes, in transient proteinuria we have to, first we have to check about the dose which the child is having, dose of prednisolone. Then if it is on the every other day regime, I will continue the same dose as daily dose of prednisolone while assessing the protein content of urine. You said that this child is overweight. Yes. What are the possible causes for this child's overweight? Yes, possible causes for the overweight might be the steroids and steroid induced hyperphagia, uh, sedentary lifestyle and the metabolic syndrome. You wanted to mention the vaccination against pneumococcus and varicella infection in this child. What's the relevance? Yes, sir. In the babies who are having nephrotic syndrome, there is an increased risk of infections like spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and varicella infection as well. So because of that, as a prophylaxis, I want to give them pneumococcal and varicella vaccines. How would you recognize a relapse of nephrotic syndrome? Yes, in a relapse of nephrotic syndrome, we can detect plus 3 protein urea in a urine heat test or a dipstick test for 3 consecutive days. Uh, uh, or else, we can detect 40 milligrams per square meter per hour urine pro protein excretion or uh, urine protein ex uh, creatinine ratio which is more than 200 millimol milligrams per millimoles for three consecutive days. What are the important aspects of home management of a child with history of nephrotic syndrome? Yes, the, in case of nephrotic syndrome, the home management is utmost important because the mother need to monitor the protein urea of the child. So they need to be educated well regarding the cause of, dis cause of the disease and how to perform the uh, heat coagulation test. And we have to ask them to record all these things in a diary and uh, be adhered with the clinic follow-up with proper timeline. Thank you.